morning year four and this is your literacy video for if you've got this booklet or this booklet on Friday the 5th of February. I'm going to start by saying a very big well done and that's to Jason for a fantastic effort with his comprehension yesterday. You really did try hard Jason so keep that up. Now we start each of our lessons by looking at six high frequency words and our high frequency words all begin with the letter B this week and we've played lots of games so far with them and today we're going to play a roll and read. So you'll notice that I've got a dice on my whiteboard and on each side of my dice there's one of our high frequency words. So we're going to roll it, see what word we land on and then I want you to read it and then we'll check if you were correct. Okay, so there's our first word. What does that one say? Before. Brilliant. Well done for joining in at home. Next one. What does that one say year four? This one's a conjunction, remember? Because. Brilliant. Okay, what about this one? Back. Began. Make sure you're saying these words at home before I say them year four. You've had this one already. Back. What about this one? Bean. Brilliant. They could roll two more times. What does that one say? Bear. Well done. And finally then. Before. Brilliant. Well done year four. Now we're going to start with this booklet, okay? And if you've got that booklet, your learning question today says, can I infer meaning from speech and pictures? And we've looked at speech earlier in the week and we decided that speech are the words that are spoken and we saw speech in these can anybody remember what these are called so they're speech bubbles well done and inside the speech bubble are the words that that person is saying so here i've got a little boy and he's hanging upside down He's got a big smile on his face and he's saying, swinging upside down is my favourite. Okay. Now what you've got to do today is because we are inferring a little bit like inference Iggy who looks for clues, we're going to look at the picture and read the speech. And then we've got to decide which sentence matches the picture and the speech best. So here we've got a little boy who's got his pyjamas on and he's jumping up and down on his bed and he's saying, I'm not tired yet. So now which of these sentences matches the picture and the speech best? Tom didn't want to go bed or Tom was tired from jumping. Which of those sentences matches the picture and the speech best? Brilliant, so it would be that Tom didn't want to go to bed. But he isn't saying I don't want to go to bed. He's just saying 
I'm not tired yet. So we've looked for the clues and decided that he's not tired from jumping, that he didn't want to go to bed. Now for your activity today, year four, you're going to turn to page 21. So let's pop it under the visualiser. Page 21. And it says, match the sentence. Look at the pictures. Tick the box next to the sentence, which best describes each picture. So let's have a little look at the first one together. So here we've got a little boy. And he's got a piggy bank in his hand. And that's where we put pocket money. And it says, I'm saving my pocket money. So he's saving all of that money, maybe to buy something fantastic. And then we've got two sentences. Joe spends all his pocket money. Is that what Joe is doing? Or Joe puts his money in his piggy bank. Which of those two sentences best describes the picture and the speech? You've got to put a tick next to the sentence that you think is correct. And you've got four to do. Okay, so once you've done your questions here for, you know I like to set you an extra challenge. And your challenge is to correct the punctuation in this sentence. So I've got a sentence. Joe puts his money in his piggy bank so that he can buy a toy. But you'll notice that some things are missing from my sentence. There's no capital letters and there's nothing at the end. I want you to rewrite this sentence either in your booklet somewhere, wherever you can find space, or in your green books, okay? And when you take a picture of your learning, I also want to see a picture of your challenge as well. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next booklet. So if you've got this booklet, this is the part of the video for you. And your text today is called Animals. And on my board, I've put lots of different pictures of different animals. I can see a frog. I can see a seahorse, a flamingo, a beetle, a hippo. Okay, so there are lots and lots of animals. And your text today is all about animals. And it's about different ways that we can group animals, okay? So one way that we can group animals is if they are mammals. Now, mammals are warm-blooded. They live on land and in water. They have hair or fur. They have skeletons on the inside of their bodies and they give birth to live babies which drink their mother's milk. Okay, so one way we can group animals together is if they're all mammals. So let's stick that one up to use it to remind us. So we've got mammals. Another way we can group animals is if they are amphibians. So see if you can say that one for me, amphibians. And amphibians are cold-blooded animals that live on land and water. They have moist skin, so that means it's a little bit wet, and webbed feet. So that means they can't go like this with their feet. They're stuck together a little bit. They have skeletons on the inside of their bodies, but they lay eggs, okay? So they don't give birth to live babies like mammals, they lay eggs. So that one's amphibians. Then we've got reptiles, and reptiles are cold-blooded. They live on land and in water, and they have scales ear holes and dry skin. So they're not moist like amphibians. They have a skeleton on the inside of their bodies, 
but tortoises have one on the outside too. And reptiles also lay eggs and then the baby would hatch from the egg. Another different type of animals then are fish. Fish are cold blooded and they live in water. They have fins to move and gills to breathe underwater. They have skeletons on the inside of their bodies and they also lay eggs, but they lay their eggs in water as well. Okay, we can also have a group of animals called birds. Birds are warm blooded animals and they live on land and water. They have feathers, wings and a beak. They have skeletons on the inside of their bodies and they also lay eggs. And then finally, year four, our last group of animals are insects. And insects are cold blooded. They live on land and in water and their bodies have three parts. And most insects have two pairs of wings. They have skeletons on the outside of their body and they hatch from eggs and often change their bodies. For example, a caterpillar changes into a butterfly. Okay, so when we're reading our text today, we will read about animals that are mammals, say that one after me, mammals, animals that are amphibians, your turn, reptiles, fish, birds and insects. Okay, so we've got our six different types of animals but I've also picked out some of the key words that you'll need to know to be able to access today's text. Okay, so the first one is herbivores. And herbivores are animals that eat plants, okay? That's all they eat. Carnivores are animals that eat meat and that's all they eat. And then omnivores are a mixture of both. So that means that they eat plants and meat. And quite often humans, us, we are omnivores, okay? Quite often anyway, unless you're a vegetarian. And then the final word I've chosen for you today is unique. And unique means one of a kind and different. We are all unique. We're all a little bit different. So for your learning today, you're going to turn to page 26 and 27. So let's pop that under the visualiser. Okay, and I'm going to read this little section at the top. Please make sure you follow along with your finger. Animals can be put into groups based on what they eat. And they can also be put in these groups that we spoke about earlier. Okay. Herbivores eat plants. Carnivores eat meat. And when it says eat meat, it means that they eat other animals okay and omnivores eat both plants and meat so i'm going to read you the first box about this first animal and then you're going to read the rest of it so all of the this information is about piranhas okay and if we look at the picture piranha is a kind of fish okay so i'm a fish that lives in rivers in south america and that is a continent isn't it south america i'm an omnivore i eat seeds and plants as well as other fish okay so we would class him as an omnivore and as a fish. 
So what I want you to do now is to read the information about the other animals. So we've got information about a frog, snake, bat, ostrich and zebra. Okay, so make sure when you're reading, if you get stuck on a word, that you underline it and ask somebody to help you with that word. Just going to give you a little bit of time to read it now. And once you've done that, guys, you're going to have a go at answering the questions. So like always, we'll have a little talk through them now. So, which group of animals only eat plants? Now, I told you this on my slide so you might want to rewind the video to my slide on new vocabulary or it also tells it you in this first section okay so you're going to find your answer just there why do frogs have strong legs so for that question guys we're only going to be looking in this box. We're not going to read down here for frogs because all of the information about frogs are in that section. And I'm going to look for the word strong. I'm going to skim my text for the word strong to see if that will help me. So I have strong legs. And then I want you to figure out the rest of the answer. Why do they have strong legs? Question number three. How can you tell that snakes are carnivores? So remember, carnivores are meat eaters. So again, we're only going to be looking in the snake box. And if it's eating meat... Think about some animals that a snake might eat. So I'm going to look in here for a different animal that it says the snake eats. So I'm finding that keyword eat. I usually eat. And then you're going to find the rest of the information. Question four. Why do bats need to have good hearing? Now, we've done lots of questions like this now where we're retrieving our information, like Rex Retriever. So, I'm not going to turn to the back page. I want to see if you can figure that one out on your own. Question number five. Can all birds fly? So, for that one, I'm going to look, in, look at the animals that we've got. Okay, can we find a bird? So the bird is the ostrich. Okay, that's the only bird on there. And tell me now if all birds can fly. What does the word unique mean? That was one of my key vocabulary words that I spoke to you about at the start of our lesson. So see if you can remember. If you can't, rewind the video. And then finally, give one example of a mammal from the text. And what makes an animal a mammal? So for that, let's get our mammal help sheet again. So, mammals are warm-blooded. Oh, but there are lots of warm-blooded animals. They have hair or fur. And they give birth to live babies, okay? So use that information to help you to answer the last question. But you know I like to set you an extra challenge here for, so once you've answered all of those questions, your challenge is to research an animal of your choice. So you might want to choose your favourite animal or an animal that you don't know very much about. And I want you to tell me if it's a herbivore, a carnivore or an omnivore, where it lives and any other facts that interest you. And don't forget to take a picture of your research when you take a picture of your comprehension questions as well. 
might find in a new fall. Let's end our learning by having a little think about what we've achieved today. Let's roll our dice. And we landed on a six. What helped you with your learning today? So was it my video? Was it my help sheets at the bottom? Or was it somebody at home with you? Don't forget to take a picture and send it to the year four email address.